minute, I'm gonna need a sentimental man or woman to pump me up. I'm trying to bring out the fabulous, cause I give up way too much. I just need like two shots in my cup, two shots of wine. Get it because of viticulture. Okay. Hello everyone and welcome back to Foster the Meatball, a channel all about board games and wine. Exactly. We are here today to do another Done Well, Do Better review. And today's review is on Viticulture World, the new expansion for Viticulture, a game about wine in Italy. Well, this one's world, I think. This one's world, but Viticulture base is just Italy. I said I think, I know. Viticulture world. World. And this, my friends, is the wine crate box, which fits the base game. The Viticulture World expansion and the Tuscany expansion, everything for Viticulture will fit nicely inside of this wine crate, okay? Now, it's quite large, so I'm just gonna sit it right here for now, it's not going very far. As per usual, we are gonna do a bit of an overview of the game, then we're gonna go into our done well, do better <coughs> review. What does it do well? What could it do better? We have a couple of thoughts. Mm -hmm. Viticulture World was sent to us for review from Stonemeyer, so thank you to Stonemeyer for sending this to us. And I do wanna mention that the new cards have been sent out to replace the old cards that were in the South America part of the game, mm -hmm. which were very problematic. So we do have the new cards and that would be what we would be playing with. Let's start with a little overview. Viticulture World, the cooperative expansion. Cooperate with members of your extended winemaking family in various different regions around the world as you try to achieve global recognition. Balance the management of your individual vineyard with the combined effort of your fellow players to gain influence within the region. Short and sweet. Basically, Viticulture World is a cooperative version mm -hmm. of Viticulture that allows you to travel around different regions of the world to make wine. And it's very thematic. There's pieces of story and history all throughout the game mm -hmm. that tell you about winemaking within that region. Some of the differences of Viticulture World and how it makes it cooperative, obviously you're working together. There are various regions. I can't remember exactly how many. There's like Europe and South America, and there is, just wait, I know, Europe, South America. There's Charterstone. So there's seven unique continent decks. Obviously they're based on all of the continents. Wait, I can do this. South America, North America, Asia, Australia, Europe. Africa. Antarctica? Is Antarctica in this? I don't know. Oh, Green Gully. <laughs> no Antarctica, but Green Gully, which is the introductory section. I anyway, think it's also not Australia, it's Oceania. Oh, it's Oceania, because yes. it's like New Zealand. Exactly. So it comes with seven continents. Each one is kind of like a different scenario. It's going to have its own event deck mm -hmm. that you're going to be flipping through, and it changes up the gameplay just a little. Some of them are going to have different set setup rules and, and things like that. So you're working together to achieve 25 victory points each. And there's now also an influence marker, this little pink leaf, it's very cute, that you have to get to 10 mm -hmm. by the end of the game. Another new implementation of this, it adds in more mama and papa cards, which means the mama and papa cards from this game can be intertwined with the original game. So you can get two mamas and two papas, depending on how you draw the cards, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. Other than that, there's a few other different steps throughout the game. So there's some fall actions, some spring actions that you're doing. The wake up track, instead of it being kind of like a column is now a circle. Yeah. So there's a few additional rules, but the base game is essentially it's, the same. It's fundamentally the same game. There's you know some new tiles that are injected into the game called innovation tiles mm -hmm. that allow you to like upgrade certain spaces and, and do certain different types of actions. 90% of this game is the same. Yeah as the original viticulture. So you're using the same green yeah. cards, purple cards, blue cards, yellow cards. There's a few additional ones that get added into the deck. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be very familiar. It doesn't take a lot to learn. And if you also play with Viticulture Tuscany, the Viticulture World, it comes with its own board that is double-sided. So one side you can use if you wanna play with the Tuscany expansion, the other side you use if you don't. Just so you guys know, we did not play with the Tuscany expansion. We just played with base viticulture, the essential 
Torrential Edition as well as Viticulture World. Mm -hmm. Another thing about this game is that your workers, you get all of them to start, mm -hmm. but they are specifically assigned to a season. So two of your workers are automatically assigned to summer. They wear yellow hats and then two to winter who wear blue hats. You can train them to take their hats off so that they can be placed anywhere, but that is kind of a different mm -hmm. element. If they have the hat on, whether it be summer or winter, you have to use those workers in those respective seasons until you train them, the hat comes off, and then they can be used anywhere. Okay, so that's mainly the overview and what some of the big changes are within the game. So maybe we'll jump into the review, starting with the done well. What does this game do well? This is going to be a hot take, and I just want to preface this with this is my opinion of my experience with viticulture and viticulture world and all of that. But in my opinion, I think this is the best iteration of viticulture so far. Viticulture is an amazing game. I want to also state that. I love normal viticulture. I love Tuscany. But this, I think, is how I will play viticulture moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's a product of just having played the other stuff so much. And this is like the new shiny toy. However, I just feel like this game was meant for this. Mm -hmm. Like this is the optimized version of Viticulture. And I think that's important for me to state because co-op games are not normally something I enjoy. But I've been loving, I've been absolutely loving this game. I think that it takes Viticulture to the next level. What I think it does well is it is not easy. And I like that. I like that it's not easy because every single decision you make matters yeah and it forces you to communicate with your the person you're playing with because you both need to get to the objective so if you're just doing your own thing you're not going to succeed we've played this three times so far mm -hmm. and it we've succeeded once but we got a rule wrong we're replaying the first scenario again because in fact we did win the first one but in fact we did we also did cheat we didn't know yeah, one thing. Jeffo told us we cheated. Yeah. Yeah. We did one thing wrong. One thing wrong, so we're trying it again. Don't yeah, we we succeeded. I really, really, really enjoy how crunchy it is. I hate using that word. Every single decision you make matters. Mm -hmm. And I really like that. I'm very shocked at how thinky this game is. For me, I think this is the kind of expansion that we personally like the best, where it doesn't completely change the game. It adds a few things and really just kind of enhances it. Typically, we don't prefer co-op games, but I do prefer this one as a co-op because it still feels like a personal challenge within mm -hmm. the game. It's very difficult, and I might even get into that in the do better section, but it is very difficult, so there is even more strategy. I think for those of us who have played regular viticulture like a million times, which we have, you start to lean on the same strategies. Mm -hmm. You start to know what works better. This one, it's totally different because each of the continent's event cards really kind of change up how that game plays. Now, throughout the game, you're playing over six years. Each of the event decks come with eight event cards. So the first time you play, you play with one through six. And then if you want to play it again, you add in the other two, shuffle them up and take two out. So it's a totally different game, mm -hmm. which I think is, is really great because it's going to give it a lot more replayability. So this is not a campaign game. You can continuously play these scenarios and these events over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. It's super thematic based on the way that the event cards come up and the region that you're in. It gives a lot of flavor text. So if you're into like the history and stuff, then that's something that you're probably going to enjoy for sure. You're essentially just using the base game. So it's not... Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's not adding a ton of things. I will just say the wine crate is also amazing. Like the tray inserts on the inside, mm -hmm. very, very good. I do think that this is also my favorite way to play viticulture now. Yeah, I feel like this has been refined to like, again, the idealization of, of viticulture. Mm -hmm. The decision making between, okay, am I focusing on my victory point condition right now? Am I focusing on moving that event token up? Mm -hmm. And the innovation tiles, like which ones are beneficial for us right now? Which ones aren't? There's mm -hmm. just, it's incredible how much you have to think about on your turn. And I'm just shocked by it. It shocked me. Keep in mind, we haven't developed the strategy yet. Not at know? all. Okay, so moving into the do better, I have a couple of thoughts. <laughs> Okay, I've talked about the hats. Adorable. So yeah. cute. They're awful. They do not stay on the meeple's heads. And it is it drives me insane. Caveat that quickly. We've spoken to some others and they don't have that issue. Well, I have that issue. So it could just be for some weird reason. It could be ours. 
but basically the hats are supposed to just snap on the meeples and then snap off yeah they're like but our hats are i think just too big for the meeples yeah just by a smidgen so they'll just kind of pop off we i guess we we could try some of the other hats i i'm echoing jamie's sentiment with the done uh, do better and again please keep in mind this might just be our copy of it doesn't matter it's annoying to me (laughs) and also just i think they're it's a really cute idea but like even in theory like putting them out they're they're pretty clunky and stuff i think they're cute but i just I don't know. I, I really they're... like them. I, I think they're great. I just wish they would snap on properly. If they snapped on properly, I, I, I love sure. them. I think it's a really unique way to identify that there's an upgrade with a meeple. How, do you, how otherwise would you do that with a wooden meeple? How else would you do it? I don't know, but I don't like Different them. meeples, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Another thing in terms of do better is that this game is very difficult. I want, I want to emphasize the fact that we played the introductory level twice they've put in an additional mechanism to extend your year so that you could win with help and it is still we did not even we came close we won but we cheated without knowing that we cheated but it's very very difficult so that isn't necessarily a do better on the game but when the introductory level feels impossible to win Again, I think it just forces you to figure out the strategy. But yeah, I agree. We played the introductory un- introductory level twice. We had to use the extra cards both times, which is fine. Like I said, this isn't really a do better. It's more so just be aware that you are going to lose this game. Mm-hmm. And if you win on your first try, you probably cheated <laughs> like us. And then we decided to also try a medium mm-hmm. just to see how far it ramps. Mm-hmm. She ramps. Yeah, the medium one was... At least in the introductory level, we came close, but the medium one, we were, we not. were not even remotely in the close. Ballpark. Yeah. And it does make you think about the strategy more. It does make you think about like, what can we do better? But like, mm-hmm. even looking back, I'm still kind of like, I don't, I don't, even, I, I don't even know. I agreed. Yeah. There are in some scenarios, personal objectives that... I, you know, we felt like we were playing and we're like, oh, this is a cool element. But then as we were trying to achieve them, it's almost like they were trying to lead us astray mm. by wasting some of our money. Yeah. So these are, once again, excellent parts of the game. I wouldn't change it, but I, just for an awareness piece, if mm-hmm. you get frustrated easily, if you are thinking like if you're playing and you're you're losing, I think that that is just how the game is structured mm-hmm. to be difficult. Mm-hmm. It is very difficult. Yeah. And again, in our experience, I'm sure there's yeah. gamers out there that would pick this up and breeze mm-hmm. through it. I also just to to just kind of leapfrog because I agree with everything Jamie just stated. Money is so hard to come by. Stuff costs a lot. Mm-hmm. So to Jamie's point about personal goals, I was going for mine and it required me to us collectively to put out six innovation tiles. Those cost $4 per tile. To get six of those out, that was like 24 gold. Like that's a lot. And what was the reward? One victory point or three gold. Three gold. But (laughs) if you completed both of your objectives, then you could move up the influence track. Which is really hard to do. But the influence track is also very difficult to move up. It's eight to move up unless you upgrade it. And it's six, Um, which is still a lot. Which is, yeah, it's... It's, ve- it's a very difficult game. And I know that the more we play it, the more we're going to start to see those paths to victory. But right now, it's difficult. And so if you're going into this expecting like an easy, like kind of just hanging out, playing this easy, simple viticulture game, I would just caution you against that. Be a little. It reminds me a little bit of Ghost Stories. Mm-hmm. wherein that challenge is so punishingly difficult but after every game i'm like okay what can we do better what can we do differently next time i also tend to feel that in co-op games we don't communicate enough yes agreed and i wouldn't like, say that we're the best co-op no players. because we are so focused on our own turn and doing what we want to do let's just say jeff put would put his meeple somewhere i would be like i want it to go there <laughs> And then he's like, well, I need to do this. I'm like, well, I need to do that. So I think a really important part of this game is getting those innovation tiles out, but not ignoring the oval. So there's rectangle ones that kind of improve what you're able to do. And then there's oval ones that allow multiple people to go to the same spot. Mm -hmm. So I think that those are... 
maybe underused, but it's $4 each time to put them out. It really helps you to be able to accomplish more. Another thing I want to say, we've only played this at two players. I don't think I'd want to play this at more than two players. Could be difficult. I just think that it might extend the game. I feel like the time that we spend playing this at two players is perfect. It is. I agree. So adding more people is only going to lengthen that time. Mm -hmm. But we also are biased to two player, I think. True. I want to throw quickly, because we're talking about all of this, about the innovation tiles and money and stuff. The tutorial does mention that money is hard to come by. And it also says it is important to get innovation tiles. Uh, to not ignore innovation tiles. Yeah. The tutorial does call Listen to attention. to the book. The those things so obviously pay attention to those things but yeah cool I don't think I have any other and like I said before the do-betters aren't really do-betters it's more so just mm -hmm. awarenesses for you except for the hats <laughs> the hats could be done better they just need to be shrunk just like a tiny bit and what then shrinks it, things cold or heat let's well, put them in rubber, the fire I think heat would, well, that would melt them they're cute and stuff yeah. but I just find them every time I pull my meeple off the board the freaking hat falls off and it drives me I, nuts again I think if that didn't happen though you wouldn't even yeah I was all on board with the hats until they started falling off so I think that is everything for us on Viticulture World we'll be really interested to hear if you've had a chance to play this and whether or not you've won mm -hmm. have you won I'm curious can you tell us how anyways if you're interested in buying board games like Viticulture World a great place to go would be your friendly local gaming store and for us here in Halifax that is order of game cafe sure is they serve wine do they yeah pretty sure they're... i have no idea well yeah i'm assuming they have beer and stuff so yeah, I'm assuming so they, they must have wine. have wine they must have wine they for got the it. amount of dates that happen there oh my god love city that is all that we have for you guys today thank you so much for watching if you like what you see please subscribe we hope to see you again soon and now we say goodbye goodbye later days viticulture world is it the right way up Nothing. Oh. My eyes are janky. Classic. Yeah, I know, but it's not the story. This is. You know, with like, if you want to add that element of upgradeability, uh, upgradeability, upgradeability. No, no. Did you already say the board game cafe? Yep. Okay. But. Uh, <laughs>